Today I woke up with an intense desire for mall pizza. Thin, crispy, cheesy, yet somehow flavorless, I realized I hadn't had one of those generously sized slices in quite some time, and I decided that I'm gonna go get one. So come along and join me now as we venture out to a mall. We'll eat some food, spend some money on regrettable purchases, and maybe, if you behave, we'll even visit the world's smallest arcade. So. Join me, won't you? The last time I went to a mall, I visited Westfield South Center, which is the largest shopping center in Washington State. But today I wanted to go the complete opposite direction and check out the Everett Mall, which is a one-story mall that's a million square foot smaller than South Center. I used to think that bigger was always better when it came to shopping centers, but I've since come around to the idea that there are often hidden treasures in smaller, less glamorous locations. Plus, the crowds aren't as bad either, so maybe you don't always have to go to the biggest mall out there for a good time. Online reviews paint a very okay picture of the Everett Mall. Not perfect, not terrible. There are clearly people who are optimistic about this place, many of whom compliment the food court, the helpful staff, and the overall cleanliness of the building. Whereas negative reviewers generally tend to complain of a lack of stores, or at least a shortage of recognizable storefronts. The only way for us to know for sure, of course, is to venture inside ourselves. We're entering through one of the mall's rear entrances, and it's also important to note that I visited in the middle of a Tuesday, intentionally trying to avoid large crowds, so that might explain the dead mall vibes that we're getting here in this initial hallway. As you turn the first corner, though, the place really opens up with wide hallways and bright lights, though it is still kind of lacking on the amount of patrons inside. The first strip of stores look nice enough, but weren't super interesting to me. A massage parlor, a salon, a glasses store, a perfume shop, it's practically a grandma's paradise. But give me 10 more years or so, and I'll be shopping here every day. Once we get to the center of the mall, things really seem to heat up a little bit. The Bath & Body Works here is huge, and it sits across from a store called Maurice's, which is painted this really cool blue. The first store to actually lure me inside, though, is a shop called Wishes, which at first looked to be a simple toy store, but ended up having a pretty healthy board game selection. I've been on a bit of a board game kick lately, so this was just great timing for me. Inside were some games that I recognized, a number of games that I'd never seen before, and there's also a wall of different versions of Monopoly, which I particularly took offense to. Look at this SpongeBob meme edition. I had to see it, so you have to see it too. Didn't really like that, but ultimately I did pick up a couple of expansion sets for the dice drafting game Sagrada, which I've been really enjoying lately. Also, while I was checking out, I impulsively grabbed this small box of Yu-Gi-Oh cards to add to my growing collection of unopened Yu-Gi-Oh cards that I've acquired impulsively. So, Wishes was a great store with great selection and great service, and if I ever need another board game, I'm gonna seriously consider revisiting. After the board game store, my desire for pizza was too great to ignore, so we're heading to the food court. This strip of stores that we're passing on the way definitely was the most lively of the entire mall. A lot of recognizable storefronts, and honestly a lot more shoppers too. The food court is without a doubt the most trafficked area of the mall. It also serves as the main entrance to the mall, which I thought was kind of unique. It offers some recognizable restaurants like A&W, Panda Express, and Baskin Robbins, but also features a handful of local options. Instead of a Jamba Juice, there's a Crazy Fruits. Instead of Wetzel's Pretzel or Auntie Anne's, there's a Pretzel Twister. And instead of Villa Pizza, which is what I was kind of looking for, there's a Mo Pizza. It did look pretty good though, so we ended up ordering a thin and large slice of cheese pizza, which is exactly what I came to the mall to get, and also a chicken and ranch pizza, which honestly sounded kind of disgusting to me. Oh yeah, a little 
watery. Doesn't really taste like anything. That's exactly what I wanted. It's just nice and crunchy on the bottom. I regret now saying that the pizza didn't taste like anything because that's that sounds so negative and it's also just not very accurate. I meant it more like the pizza lived up to what I expected a mall pizza to be, which is just a no frills pizza. I mostly tasted the cheese and grease, which is how a mall pizza should be, I'm ho. The chicken and ranch pizza was also surprisingly good. I only got a couple of bites in before my cameraman inhaled the rest of the slice, but I thought it was pretty good. Overall, great experience at Mo Pizza. It's exactly what I wanted when I showed up to the mall, and for the rest of the day, I couldn't stop thinking about how badly I wanted to go back for another slice. Before we leave the food court, though, I have to point out how strange it was for me to see an Ulta beauty salon right next to an A&W. Really strange placement there. Also, here's me taking advantage of this little photo op they had set up right in the center of it all. Hello, spring. Hello, spring indeed. All right, I've had my fill of food, but I've still got mall shenanigans that I want to shenanigan. At the very center of the building, I couldn't help but notice a tiny arcade, and that's where we're headed next. Normally, when I think of an unbranded mall arcade, I think of sad-looking, half-empty rooms, but this one was filled to the brim with flashy, modern machines. Even though the selection was small, it had wide variety, offering pinball, fighting games, rhythm games, and more. It's also the first coin-operated arcade that I've been to in quite some time, which I thought was a pretty fun novelty. I think the strangest part of this arcade is that it's actually two separate storefronts that sit across the hallway from each other. And man, this second room is an even tighter fit than the first. I barely even fit in here. Nevertheless, I couldn't pass up a round of Lane Master, which is a really neat collision of skee-ball and bowling. I've played it before, I had to play it again, and honestly, I'll probably stop by to play it anytime I'm at this mall. But for as much fun as it is, I must say that I feel like a giant when I play it. Not only is the machine super low to the ground, but the lane is also really short. I don't so much feel like I'm rolling a ball down a lane as much as I feel like I'm just kind of chucking one into a hole. Still fun though, and it only cost a dollar for six frames, not including the generous amount of bonus frames, so that felt like a pretty good deal. So that was one out of my 10 allotted arcade dollars, and initially I was gonna spend the other nine across multiple machines, uh, but that was before I came across the Magic Coin Crane game. This machine is a winner every time claw experience with a random chance element that I was hopeless to resist. For every dollar you put in, you shall win one egg. Inside most of the eggs are a variety of trinkets, but a few of them contain a magic coin that awards you a prize from one of the storage components below. I don't particularly want any of these prizes, but I do want to find the magic coin. Give me that random chance. I need the gamble. Of course, there was no magic coin in any of the eggs that I won, but I did find one or two pretty neat knickknacks. All right, maybe it was just the one neat knickknack. I really liked this little Seattle Mariners cap that made the whole experience kind of worthwhile. I spent eight of my remaining nine dollars at Magic Coin, bringing my total remaining dollars to one. And also, while I was playing, some guy wandered over and asked me for 50 cents, so make that 50 cents remaining at the end of my arcade experience. It's not an arcade that I'd find myself spending hours in, but for a fun mall diversion, I actually really enjoyed this place, and the modern machines give me hope that they might occasionally cycle in new games, so I'm sure I'll be back to check it out again sometime. All right, let's close out this mall trip with some shopping. I came all the way out here to the shops, so I'm determined to irresponsibly part with some cash. And what better place to do that than Hot Topic, the only store for hardcore, emo, Invader Zim enthusiasts. 
If you've never been inside a Hot Topic store before, then you're really missing out. Even if none of the stuff inside actually interests you, it's always a nice treat to see what's being sold. When it comes to the clothing sold at Hot Topic, they definitely have a distinct style, most of which feature straps or chains. I can't say that any of this feels particularly edgy or even that alternative in the year 2022, but the store still has that Hot Topic vibe that it's always had. Back when I was in junior high, every female Inuyasha fan in my class shopped here regularly, and it wouldn't have shocked me to run into them at this store even today. I ended up picking up a Death Note shirt with some black nail polish and a skull bottle to really complete the look. An added bonus is that if anybody asks where I got my style, I can say, I bought it at Hot Topic, which I think might be a vintage enough phrase to be cool? Question mark? And for my last stop in the mall, I visited one of the roomiest GameStops that I think I've ever been into. Most GameStop stores feel super cramped, but this one gives you room to breathe while you browse, which I really appreciated. I was helpless to resist the charms of some of these casual board games. I'm really into the simple board games right now. Since I didn't have a Yahtzee set yet, and this Cup Noodles version seemed pretty charming, I picked that one up. It didn't come with any fancy additional rules or anything, but the biggest letdown is that the cup didn't come with a lid. It'd be so nice and portable if it had one, though I suppose I'm not sure what type of social engagements I'd be bringing a cup noodle Yahtzee game to, so maybe that doesn't even matter. I was digging through the sets of Uno cards and came across a game called Monopoly Bid, which intrigued me. I do love a game of Uno, but it can be a bit one note and tough to play with just two people, and this seemed like a game of similar style, but maybe with a bit more substance. It turns out it's actually pretty fun, though it's not very much like Uno at all. It's more of a competitive version of Solitaire with a property auction twist. Simple rules, easy to learn, and fun to play, I think this one might stick around in my casual board game rotation for a little while. Now I know what you're thinking while you watch me inspect this Roblox version of Monopoly. I know that just minutes ago I dunked on a Spongebob meme version of Monopoly, and a Roblox version is arguably more embarrassing, but here's the thing. I'm no longer embarrassed of my Roblox addiction. The shame that I feel for being able to recognize most of the Roblox servers featured in this game is nothing compared to my intense desire for the exclusive of Mr. Bling Bling Hat digital item. I'm buying it. Of course, I browsed the actual video games while I was there, though I did stick with just the used games to try and snag something at a decent price since Robloxopoly cost me like a million Robux. I ended up buying Black Sad on PS4, a game that I don't know too much about, but it kind of feels like a natural progression after I'm done with the Sam and Max reboots. They both feature detective animals, so I figure if you like one, you might like the other. I think that's sound logic. Also, I gotta point out this guy over here. You know, I've yet to see either of the new Sonic movies, but man, my interest in them just shot way up now that I know that he rides a one wheel. That's way past cool. All right, on that note, I think I should probably stop buying things for the day, so that just about wraps up my visit to the Everett Mall. On my way out though, I did pick up a coconut boba tea from this stand that I had been eyeing, and I must say, I quite enjoyed it. As for my final verdict on the state of this mall, I must say that I agree with the optimistic reviewers much more than I agree with the less than impressed ones. While the mall does feel like it's lacking some stores, it still has a lot to offer. I mean, six out of the seven anchor stores are still open, so it's definitely not dead by any means. 
They also seem to have a lot to offer families with young offspring, with diversions like a bungee jumping place located right outside of a tempting arcade. And it also had a lot of these little cars that kids can drive around the mall, which I am immeasurably upset that I am not allowed to partake in. But it's still cool. I'm gonna give the Everett Mall a solid four stars. It's a small, quiet mall, but it's far from dead, and it's also far from sad. It's bright, well-kept, and clean, and I would visit again. I think if they manage to fill in the empty locations, it could easily become a five-star experience, but as it stands, I really had a blast casually browsing and irresponsibly shopping for a few hours, and I plan on coming back sometime. If you made it this far, I really appreciate it. This video has been a bit different from my usual fare, but I did really enjoy making it. And if you're interested in more chill visits to random places, please let me know by opening your window and screaming out of it at the top of your lungs for about 15 to 30 minutes. If I can hear your collective screams from my house, I'll know that I should make another one of these. Hey there, video watchers, it's me, Captain Chef Ian Brutalfoods, and I hope you're ready to be advertised to because this video is sponsored by HelloFresh. I've been living aboard the USS Fresh for over a year now, flying around the world and screaming the good word of HelloFresh at unsuspecting individuals. When you least suspect it, I pop around the corner and go, HelloFresh's recipes are so delicious! HelloFresh helps you save time and money. HelloFresh can help you reach your goals. I've screamed at men, women, children, the elderly, and I can say that without a doubt, screaming at the elderly is definitely the most rewarding. But not as rewarding as preparing a HelloFresh meal. Not only are the recipes easy to follow, but the smells of delicious food filling up my kitchen is enough to make me consider never again sneaking up behind a grandma and going, hey lady, have you heard about HelloFresh? No? Well, when you're done falling down the stairs, I'd love to tell you about it. Cut down on your time at the grocery store, curb your fast food habit, and learn real cooking skills, all by getting HelloFresh's tasty recipes and ingredients delivered right to your door. Just do it already. I'm done trying to convince you with words, so now I'm just gonna convince you with food. Look at this. Look at this food, it's so good. I bet if you try hard enough, you can smell it. Go to HelloFresh.com and use code BRUTALMOVE16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. That's HelloFresh.com, code BRUTALMOVE16 for up to 16 free meals and three surprise gifts. Eat it. Eat it.